Tennessee Tribune. I'm Sandra Long Weaver, and I'm the editorial director for the ten for the Tribune. And today, our guest is Christina Ellis. Welcome. Thank you. And Christina has done something amazing. If you are a parent, a student in middle school, high school, stop, listen to what she has to say. She's going to talk about financial aid. When she was an undergraduate student at Vanderbilt University, she was able to figure out a way to get a half million dollars, $500,000 in scholarships and attend undergraduate school debt-free and also graduate school. All right, so let's talk about your story. And, how, and she's also written two books. I wanted to say that. So let's talk about your story and how you got there. Yeah, well basically the first day of my freshman year of high school, my mom sat me down and she said, Christina, I love you and I believe in you, but there's just no way that I can support you financially once you graduate from high school, so you've got to figure out your own way to pay for college. Okay. And at first I was kind of overwhelmed. I was like, why are you telling me this? I'm a freshman in high school. <laughs> what can I do about it? Right. But at the same time, I knew that she was just trying to be real with me and actually help me in the long run. Right. Um, it was out of love that she's telling you this, and she Absolutely. wanted you to go as far as you can, but she couldn't help you financially. Yeah, she wanted me to have opportunities that she didn't get to have, and she wanted to push and support me in them and just, you know, let me know my reality before I had to <laughs> hit it in a hard way. Um, whenever I was seven, my dad passed away after a long and painful battle with brain cancer, oh. and my family slipped below the poverty line, so even though it was really hard, to, you know, choke down that statement, I knew that she was, you know, just trying to push me forward and it ended up really motivating me. Um, she didn't really know what to do, but she started casting this vision and this dream. She was like, Christina, if you work hard now, you know, you don't have to live in a low income household your whole life. You know, you can go on and do amazing things. And she started talking about big fancy private schools and wow. um, okay. getting scholarships and encouraging me to do research and read books and try to meet with alumni from my high school who won scholarships and just, you know, gather a lot of information to make a strategy for me. Okay. And I did that and was able to get super involved in my community and um, take up leadership roles throughout high school and develop a really strong resume that led me to win all the scholarships that I did and go to Vanderbilt and Belmont debt free. Wow. And that, that is pretty amazing. Thank so you. you were able to get the yeah. Gates uh, scholarship and the Coca-Cola scholarship, I believe, both of which are difficult uh, right. to, uh, to get when you apply. So how did you prepare yourself? What is it that you had to do? Listen, parents. Okay. <laughs> well, I got involved in several extracurricular activities. A lot of them, a lot of the scholarships value community service and making a difference in your local area. So I did over a thousand hours of community service when I was in high school. Oh wow! And I found things that I really loved, things that I wanted to be doing. Um, it didn't really feel like an obligation or anything like that. It was just stuff that I was passionate about and um, you know was excited to get out and do. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up finding creative ways to stand out. Instead of just getting a regular job in high school, I ended up going to my local YMCA and asking them if I could start a gymnastics program and wow. was able to become a head coach by the time I graduated. So. From you know, high, by the time you graduated from high school, you were a head coach at the local Y? Yeah, I was. <laughs> for a gymnastics program? Wow. I was, oh, yeah. Man. I just started with two girls and, mm -hmm. you know, minimum wage and just, you know, was committed to trying to help these girls do well and it ended up taking off and I went in 15, 20 hours a week and just committed to those girls and the program was really successful. So just trying to find creative ways to take my passions and the things that I love mm -hmm. and to pour them out into the world and make a difference. Okay. And so I did that, took up different leadership roles, and then when it came time to apply for scholarships, I just kind of became obsessed with the process. I thought about it like it was a really important part-time job. I realized that you know if I put those hours in the library, mm -hmm. and even if it was hard, even if it was boring sometimes, that you know it could make a huge difference for the rest of my life. And in the long run, it sounds like it has. <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. has. And, you know, in the long run, you know, each hour that I spent in the library was worth tons and tons of money. Um, okay. So I spent a lot of, you know, weekends and Friday nights with my mom sitting in the library filling out applications and doing research. And, wow. Okay. Um, with the applications like the Gates and the Coca Cola scholarship, um, I was really intentional with every detail of it. I would go and ask my English teacher, you know, can you? 
um, look at my essays, can you give me feedback? And then I'd take it to another mentor and say, can you give me feedback? And for some of these big scholarships, I would ask, you know, at least seven people um, to take a look at the, the application, the essays, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, wow. to really review things so that I could make it as tight and as solid as possible. So mm -hmm. I think some of those next levels and those extra steps that I took really helped my application stand out from the crowd. Wow, so it sounds like, I've heard you say a couple things. So you had mentors, mm -hmm. uh, you'd go to your teachers, um, you became obsessed with the process. It became a part-time job. Yes. So in addition to being a full-time student and having another part-time job where you're being paid for being a right. coach, your other part-time job was filling out applications. Yes. So it took all of those things to really pull in those scholarships, right? Yeah, it was it's, a lot of effort. Like mm -hmm. that's one thing that I always, you know, try to be real with students about is that, you know, it is hard work. It's definitely there's a lot of people that want scholarships. A lot of people would love to have, you know, half a million dollars in scholarships and win a full ride. So you've got to be willing to take those extra steps right. to really push hard and stand out from the crowd. Mm -hmm. And so your first book that you wrote about this whole process, the name of it is? Confessions of a Scholarship Winner. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And it's available on Amazon. It's available in all the major bookstores. Um, so is that a good start for someone who's a parent or a student who's just starting that process? Yes, it's a great start. Like I always tell students and parents, you know, start early. If you can get this book in middle school, that's great. So you can start getting an idea of what you need to do in high school. But at any point in the process to sit down and really create your strategy, it's really, really important. So the book lays out all the details, everything from, you know, how do you do essays? How do you build a scholarship resume? What process do you go through to find the right scholarships for you? And how do you cater your application to stand out for that particular scholarship? So it's really an overview of the whole scholarship process. Oh, that's great. And now you've written a second book, How to Graduate Debt Free. Uh, yes. And so that is also available on Amazon and all the um, bookstores. And so what, what further details do you give uh, students? Yeah, well, How to Graduate Debt Free is basically more of an overview of the entire financial aid process. So mm -hmm. after I wrote my first book, I had a lot of parents and students come up to me and say, Hey, Christina, if I don't win a full ride scholarship, what are my other choices? Do I have to just take out a bunch of student loans and graduate with debt, or are there other things that I can do? And I was like, yes, absolutely. It's still important to be strategic and know each detail of the process. So this mm -hmm. book lays out everything from what can you do before college to start reducing your costs, how to you know, take credits when you're in high school, how to get um, reduced college applications, and how to take your um, entrance exams for cheaper, all these different things you could do in high school, how to save effectively, the nuts and bolts of financial aid. So, you know, not only how to fill out the FAFSA, but what factors affect the FAFSA and what your ultimate number is going to be. And things like, you know, how do you work through college effectively? And, you know, if you do have to take out student loans, what are your smartest choices and how do you minimize those costs as much as possible? So it's just a much broader look. Oh. and really complimentary to confessions. Oh, it's, it sounds like both of them are essential if you're yeah. looking, and especially because today's costs have skyrocketed um, if you're going to attend college. Here in Tennessee, we do have The Promise, which was is helping thousands of students. Right. Uh, but there are some students who may not be able to do that. So I think uh, looking into your books will be very helpful. And so now I, I read a little bit more about you, and there were... Um, I saw where there were sort of two things. One, you've talked a little bit about um, the two things that you really need to think about when you're looking at this, and it's what the scholarship is looking at, sort of what is the profile of the candidate that they want to give money to. Is that right? Can you talk just a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. I, I always tell students that scholarships have their why and their who. So they have, you know, the reason why they're giving away a scholarship. What are they passionate about? This person or this group of people came together and they said, hey, I want to give away a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And they have a reason why they have a type of student a lot of times that they want to invest in. And that brings me to the who. So who are they looking for? Mm -hmm. You know, what attributes does that candidate have? Are they looking for somebody who dreams of having a career in tech? in tech or STEM and you know what has that student done in high school to prove that that's really where they want to go or do they want 
philanthropists who right. are going to make a big impact on their community and you know what has that student done in high school to really show that so it's important for students to kind of have that forethought and think through you know how how does how do I fit into their picture right. you know how do I how can I cater my application to that specific scholarship mm -hmm. I think that's a wonderful uh, suggestion for students and for parents to think about as well help, helping guide their student to get to that point so uh, I appreciate that my last question um, do you work with parents or small groups of people is there something that you do uh, individually to work with these groups or yeah I do a lot of speaking at high school so I'll have um, administrators bring me in and either work with you know a classroom or a group of teachers or a convocation kind of setting and work with students on you know the whole different aspect of the process so mostly I've done groups in the last few years, but I do workshops as well. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And uh, can you give us an uh, email address or contact yeah. information uh, if someone w w wants to contact you now? Yeah, absolutely. My email is info at christinaellis.com and my okay. website is www.christinaellis.com and Christina is with a K. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. My this pleasure. is great information. Parents, hope you've heard it. Students, if your parent wasn't there, tell them because you, you need help to get into school. And thank you for joining us on Take 10 with the Tennessee Tribune. And thank you again, Christina. Thanks I've for enjoyed having it. Me. All right. Take care, and we'll see you the next time. Mm -hmm.